All right, so my name is Ryan Slabon from Lockheed Martin Space Systems Company. Um, the work I do there, I'm a flight software developer for um, the small spacecraft and payload flight software product line. Um, today I'm gonna talk to you about our past year of collaborating with um, the Center for High Performance Reconfigurable Computing, uh, sponsored by the National Science Foundation, also known as SHREC. Um, my counterpart that helped me put these slides together, Patrick Govin, he's unable to make it due to finals in school. Um, however, I'll try to do his slides justice. Um, and so the theme for this presentation is we stood up uh, NASA's open source core flight system uh, running on RTEM's real-time operating system on the Shrek space processor. All right, so the agenda, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the motivation of why we uh, went down this path of doing this work. Uh, talk about a cube satellite called Skyfire and their flight software baseline. Uh, I'll then talk about the Shrek space processor for those of you who may not be familiar with it. Um, tie in what we had to do to stand up this uh, software stack on top of the Shrek space processor and then wrap it up with successes and future work. All right, so motivation. Uh, Lockheed Martin is building a CUBE satellite called Skyfire. It's a part of the NASA Next Step program. It's gonna be 6U form factor. It's gonna get a free ride um, on the space launch system in 2018 with the Orion Exploration Mission 1. Um, so that mission, the SLS, is gonna put us on a lunar trajectory. And really, Lockheed Martin is developing this CUBE satellite as a demonstration platform. And so uh, one of the big things that we're trying to do with this satellite is demo new uh, infrared technology. And so we'll be taking infrared pictures of the moon and sending those back to NASA. Um, additionally, us as the flight software um, product line, we're looking to demonstrate some new technologies um, at Lockheed Martin, which would be flying the core flight system, um, as well as flying the Shrek space processor, um, and then actually RTEMS as well. And so those are all kind of new things for uh, Lockheed Martin. And so this right right hand graphic is the concept of operations for the Skyfire Cube satellite. Uh, we're on the hook to deliver it in um, early 2018, and it's going to launch hopefully by end of year 2018. Uh, get that lunar trajectory. Uh, mission durations about three to four weeks. Um, and really, we're trying to just get those images of the moon and downlink those to uh, NASA. And then we have our own agenda with the flight software, obviously. All right, so here's a graphic uh, no sh or flight software stack for Skyfire. Um, you'll notice at the bottom we have the Shrek space processor, which is a multi-core processor, and I'll talk more about it on the next slide. Uh, just above that, Skyfire uh, did a trade down selected to RTEM's real time operating system for the OS. Um, I'll talk more about why one of the key drivers there. And then moving up from there, um, those of you familiar with the core flight system, you'll recognize the platform support package as well as the OS abstraction layer. Um, we have names for the ones that we developed for this work. Um, and then the Skyfire baseline is going to uh, fly all 12 of those. Uh, NASA open source applications, as well as a handful of um, mission applications developed by Lockheed Martin, and those all talk through the software bus that the core flight system provides. Um, and so what you see in the purple dotted lines, this is a software product that Lockheed Martin calls the flight software common core, and that uh, heavily leverages the core flight system in addition to Lockheed Martin proprietary software. Um, so we have a timeline over here on the left. Uh, just an editorial note that 2015 denotes the end of 2015, not the beginning. Uh, I didn't catch that before public release. It's a little confusing. Um, so at the end of 2015, Skyfire announced that they were going to fly the Flight Software Common Core. And then early 2016, uh, they down-selected to RTEMS for their real-time operating system. Um, about mid-year um, of us doing this development, we were able to accomplish the Flight Software Common Core running on RTEMS um, on the COTS development board that has the same Xilinx Zinc system on a chip as the Shrek space processor. It's called the Z-board. 
Um, shortly after that, we upgraded to the Core Flight System 6.5 release, and that was uh, extremely painless, which was fantastic. We were really excited about that, how easy it was. Um, and then in July, we were actually able to demonstrate the Flight Software Common Core running on our TEMS on the actual EDU Shrek Space Processor. Okay, so the Shrek Space Processor, if you're unfamiliar with it, um, the Shrek group set out to develop this um, space processor that was high performance, however, um, low power consumption, as well as some other aspects such as reconfigurable um, and reliability. And so they achieved this by using both uh, commercial off the shelf parts as well as some rad hardened parts and rad tolerant components on the space processor. Um, also, they uh, had a goal to make this space processor um, much more affordable than the ones that we're familiar with, such as the RAD 750. And so these boards, the flight processor uh, is roughly $30,000, and then the EDU is less than $10,000. Um, and so that's the, essentially the onboard computer for the Skyfire uh, vehicle. And so standing up our TEMS, um, on this Shrek space processor with the Common Core. There were some hurdles that we had to overcome, uh, but they, uh, one of the drivers for picking RTEMS was that they already supported the Xilinx Zinc uh, board support package for both the Z board, which was that development board I talked about, as well as uh, the KeyEMU emulator target. And so from there, we were able to work with uh, Shrek to develop the board support package for the actual Shrek space processor um, and not the Z board. One of the key differences is that the Z board uses NOR flash and the CSP uses NAND flash. Um, and so with that, we had the students at the University of Florida develop a NAND controller driver, as well as uh, we had an intern this summer who did a lot of the work for the SPY driver for our attempts on the CSP. And so we're getting pretty close to having a pretty full functioning board support package for the Shrek space processor and RTEMS. Um, some future plans that uh, Shrek still has on their agenda is to uh, develop the uh, Xilinx Zinc device configuration driver and this is going to allow uh, reconfiguring that FPGA during runtime uh, via software as well as some FPGA scrubbing. And then also all the development that Shrek has been doing for this uh, RTEMS board support package is currently only available to Shrek members such as Lockheed Martin and the, all the other industry um, partners that they have. However, they do have plans to get this, um, a lot of this development pushed to the RTEMS uh, GitHub for anyone to have. And so it would just be another BSP that RTEMS can advertise they support. All right, so <clears throat> like I said, uh, our flight software common core heavily leverages the core flight system. And so one aspect that we had to work on was the operating system abstraction layer. And so what we did is we actually, um, so out of the box, core flight system prov provides a RTEMS uh, operating system abstraction layer. However, it was for RTEMS 4.10 and it didn't have the runtime loader at that time. And so it was using um, an dis additional piece of software for a runtime loader called CEXP. However, CEXP, we found, did not have ARM support, and so we didn't want to uh, battle with making it support um, ARM. And so what we did instead is we started with the POSIX OS abstraction layer, and we just did the little bit of porting we needed to do to make that run in RTEMS, because RTEMS is a POSIX-compliant operating system. And so anyone that stood up um, a new operating system on a new piece of hardware will uh, definitely attest to there's a lot of challenges you have to work through. And so some of the challenges we had um, in getting this POSIX RTEMS uh, OS abstraction layer stood up, uh, initially we ran into a caching problem after the applications were loaded where um, we had to do some flushing of the caches in order to load subsequent apps. Um, additionally, we ran into a, another cache-related problem, however, completely different, and that was in the runtime loader itself. Um, and this was causing us, for our section headers of the applications, to get 
overflow buffers. And so we would like, even though our string table was in our L file, um, when we would load it in our Thames, it would not show up. And so um, I'll talk to the, these bugs that have mostly, I think almost all of them have been fixed in our Thames uh, mainstream, which has been uh, really good on the our Thames developers to fix those. Um, also, we found that the runtime loader initially was unable to handle uh, weak symbols, and so we had to do a patch where we were forcing all weak symbols to be uh, forced strong at the linker step. Um, and like I said, it's a POSIX compliant OS. Um, however, even when I do stuff with other real-time operating systems that advertise POSIX compliance, there's always a, a few gotchas, I guess you would call them. Uh, one of them, primarily, I've seen this in other OSs, is the SA restart flag for your timers is not supported. And so the POSIX OS abstraction layer uses this restart flag, and that's so other system calls get restarted when a timer triggers. Um, so without that support, we had to figure out how to work around that. Um, another very minor bug was that the DL error was non-conforming to um, what it should be essentially, um, but that was an easy workaround and I'm pretty sure that's fixed already as well. Um, and then one thing we noticed before we transitioned to CFE or CFS 6.5 was that there was, um, it looked like the initialization thread priority was hard coded um, and it was a lower priority such that in the real time environment when we load our application, some of them were preempting the OS in it and so that was causing issues. However, in 6.5 that's been corrected and so it's really a, a non-issue now if you're using the latest release of Corp Byte system. So the platform support package, that's the one that's kind of uh, right there tangential with the operating system. And so this is where you implement the hardware specific uh, uh, details and the kind of the bootstrap code that calls the OS um, at init. And so we had to do a little bit of porting. Again, we started with the PC Linux that was delivered with Core Flight System, and we just did some minor tweaking again to that POSIX implementation to make it uh, work with our Thames. And so that was really helpful for us because we didn't have to modify it much. Uh, we did do some uh, proprietary things in there, uh, specifically for our Skyfire mission. Uh, and then we switched the one hertz wake up for that uh, the OS requires in Core Flight System. Uh, I think that was using signals originally in the PC Linux implementation, and we switched that to a timer server in RTEMS. Um, again, challenges associated with doing this porting for the platform support package is we had to um, resolve our undefined symbols, which was a little bit of a bear. The, I guess the way we can do it is use NM to find all the undefined symbols and just force them in with the linker argument. However, we typically just load the applications and it'll tell us which ones are undefined and then we go and force them in. Um, so kind of brute force. And so our successes and challenges um, in standing up the flight software common core on our Thames on the Shrek space processor. Um, so big success is that we do have the Skyfire uh, software baseline running on the Shrek space processor and we're doing functional verification testing um, with our ground system in the loop. Uh, huge thank you to NASA for making the 6.5 transition so easy. Um, literally it was it was very simple to upgrade and so if you haven't upgraded to 6.5 uh, by now don't be scared to it's very simple um, and then Huge thank you to OAR and Artems. Uh, they've been super supportive of us, and we've, we use our uh, Shrek community to submit the tickets for the bugs or issues we found with the runtime loader primarily, and we've gotten uh, great support from Artems to fix those patches and uh, update the main line. Um, also, starting with the POSIX, OSAL, and platform support package, that was a huge help for us uh, to get it ported over to what we're calling ARM RTEMS. Um, and then we also call it RTEMS POSIX for the OSAL. And then some challenges is, I think we were the pathfinders for the RTEMS ARM runtime loader um, because it seems like a lot of issues we ran into was kind of just like the first people really beating on it. 
Um, but luckily, we've, we've done that legwork now. And so, uh, like I said, a lot of those have been fixed on the main line. And so if you go and try to do this yourself, there's probably a lot of hurdles that we had to jump over that you wouldn't have to yourself. Um, and then porting PC, Linux, OSAL to ARM, RTEMS. We had those few challenges with like the SA restart flag. We had another issue uh, with signal masks that was causing our scheduler um, to not operate as we desired when, when running on the embedded target. Um, so future work, uh, Skyfire, like I said, they're going to have to deliver this early 2018. So they're gonna begin their software, hardware integration testing, continue doing that functional verification testing, um, as well as the University of Florida, or I should call them Shrek because they're transitioning to the University of Pittsburgh. Um, but they're gonna continue to solidify their NAND uh, controller driver that they've developed in RTEMS and deliver that to us. And then Shrek, like I said, they're moving to the University of Pittsburgh, I think this coming semester in a few weeks. Um, but they're gonna continue increasing their RTEM support for the Shrek space processor and try to get all of those, um, all the development they've done pushed to the GitHub. And so um, that way everyone has access to it and we can continue to build up the support for the Shrek space processor. And so I think with that, I've probably caught us up on time and I'll open it to any questions. Are there questions? So actually, I'm the one who took your name tag accidentally this morning, so I'm sorry. Um, oh, I have mine from yesterday, <laughs> mine right, I guess. Mine was right by yours. <laughs> the, um, so thanks to you guys for, for blazing through the arm, and y'all had some of the C++. I think all of those are now fixed. I agree with yep. you. Um, I don't remember the SA restart and the DL error, so we need to fix it. But in case anybody's not here all week, we think we're technically complete for 4.12. Uh, there's some documentation and some new hosting issues on pointers to the new documentation. But so if there's Shrek stuff that needs to get merged, we need to push on all of y'all's tickets to make sure okay. that they're dead before, because we're probably, we were hoping before Christmas, but nobody works really well before Christmas. So, <laughs> so it just didn't happen. So it'll probably be first of February, I'm guessing, but four, four 12 branches. Okay. But thank you guys, it was nice. Yeah, so thank Let's close your tickets and make sure y'all make sure are all happy. Okay. Very good. Any other questions? Here's Kat. Uh, just trying to establish scope uh, for the, the OSAL, BSP, PSP development effort. About how long did it take and what was the, the team size? Mm. So we've been working on that effort really since the beginning of the year. I would say is a six month effort probably before we had things running on the Z board. Um, and it was pretty seamless to transition to the Shrek space processor after that. And our team, um, pretty small team, less than 10. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Early in the presentation, you had notes about using QEMU. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, how much success have you had with that? And was, you know, would you say there's a lot of value in using it, or was it just too dissimilar from the hardware? No, I think it was uh, we, the, biggest, the biggest value we gained from it um, was one of those problems we had with the runtime loader where our string table was overrunning the buffers at uh, load time. And so we could actually use uh, key MU or QEMU to debug because when we would run it on the emulator, it wouldn't cause a, a, a reset. And so on the hardware, the board would just reset when you hit something like that. Um, but on the emulator, it would actually print out what the error was. And so I would say the most success we've had is debugging problems. Uh, we don't use it much as an emulator um, just because we're not that f familiar with it and it, it's not that simple to get like uh, commands in and out of QEMU, QEMU. Any other questions? No, very good, thank you Ryan. Thanks. Thanks.